Hi, I'm Jackson Doe with No Finance, bringing you the most up-to-date small business financing news and insights across the U.S. So some of the news on the docket today that I'm going to go over, one being the Fed Prime rate drop last week, also the uh, SBA 504 rule change as far as uh, debt refinancing, Idea Financial receiving a credit facility. Let's see, we have uh, some news with some partnerships with a bank and a, and a super broker or super processor. The, a fintech, if you like, for an SBA product. The uh, 2024 Small Business Lending Survey report just came out yesterday. So I'm going to go over some of those insights that they pull from banks all across the country. And then uh, lastly, we're going to go over Hurricane Helene. And if you're a small business owner in, in an affected area, how you can apply for assistance. Thoughts and prayers first going out to everybody that's been affected. Uh, it's been terrible. So many lives lost and uh, just really sad. So but we will give you all some news for the small business owners that, that need assistance. So with that, let's get started. First off, I want to start with the news last week that the Fed dropped the prime rate from 8.5% to 8%. So for you small business owners that are already paying on these SBA 70 loans, you realize how big of a um, increase or decrease a half percentage point can make in your monthly payment. Over the last four years since COVID, the rates have increased steadily. And this is the first decrease that we've had since pre-COVID. So this is great news for you SBA borrowers out there, you small business owners across the U.S. that are using the SBA program for financing. Um, so very happy to hear that news for you guys. And then if you're looking to apply for the SBA 7A, now's a great time to apply for the loan. Hopefully these rates stay steady, if not keep going down to where they were at before COVID. So it's been a long four years for you small business owners dealing with inflation, just higher costs issues with the supply chain on and on, obviously COVID. But as far as the SBA 7A loan, if you're a borrower or if you're looking to apply, now is a great time to get started because again, with it, the rate decrease, I'll show you all how big of a uh, decrease in payments it is. And I'll have this uh, SBA 7A loan calculator that I pull up on the screen here in a second. All right, we're looking at the SBA 7A loan calculator that I use as a reference. It's not 100% accurate, but it's going to give you a good idea of what your payment would be. So we're going to look at, again, with the Fed dropping the prime rate from 8.5% to 8%. Keep in mind that banks do usually kick in 2.5% interest on top of that. So when you were paying 11% last week, now you're paying 10.5%. So we're going to look at 11 and 10.5%. If you had a million dollar loan at 11%, most SBA loans go over 10 years. So you have 120 monthly payments. And let's see, the uh, total interest paid is 653,000 here. The monthly loan payment is uh, 13,775. All right, let's keep that in mind. So we go to 10 and a half. You can see that the total interest paid drops from 653 to 619,000. And the uh, monthly loan payment dropped from 13,775 to 13,493. So drop of you know, what is that? 280 bucks, something like that, close to 300 bucks. So significant drop, you know, a couple hundred bucks goes a long way over uh, 10 years. I'll leave the website or under the description so you all can play around the numbers with whatever loan amount that you're looking to borrow. Keeping on with the good news about SBA payments. So the SBA just released that they are going to streamline SBA 504 refinances. So if you currently have an SBA 504 loan, that's where you finance your, maybe your property, a piece of equipment, a building, wherever you operate out of, if you actually purchase that property through the SBA 504 loan program, you're now going to be able to have a streamlined experience to refinance that where you can get cash out and uh, lower your monthly payment or just lower your monthly payment now with the uh, decrease in the Fed prime rate. Also, uh, you can refinance commercial mortgage if you have a commercial mortgage that you're paying that's not an SBA 504 loan, you could refinance it with an SBA 504 mortgage. So something to consider there, but obviously that's great news for American businesses that have this SBA 504 loan or have the opportunity to refinance it in a streamlined process where they can access cash quicker if they need the cash or if they want to lower their monthly payment or do, do both. So great news on that front as well. More exciting news on the lending front, we heard from Idea Financial, an online lender that offers term loans and lines of credit, that they uh, received a $50 million credit facility from a large bank that's going to be able to help Idea Financial now offer lines of credit up to $350,000, whereas before it was $250,000. So this is a huge increase. It's great for the small business borrowers that work with 
idea financial already that now they're going to have access to another hundred thousand dollars if not more and as well as new clients they're going to be, be able to access much more capital up front so as far as online lenders go i don't know anybody that's offering lines of credit up to three hundred fifty thousand dollars most of them are 100 to 150 i've seen 200 but that's it usually idea financial was the highest in terms of the lines of credit amount and I've worked with them for a couple of years now. I've always had great reviews for the small business owner clients that I refer to Idea Financial. Uh, a little information on Idea, they're based out of Miami. They've been open since 2017. And I'm going to go through some of the numbers here, the qualifications uh, to qualify for an Idea Financial term loan or line of credit. You just need a 650 credit score and above, two years time in business. They don't do Nevada, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Vermont. They also don't do trucking, auto sales, financial services, real estate, consulting, construction, oil and gas. They do not do. And they need to see at least eight minimum deposits a month going in your bank account from your customers or you know whoever you're selling or providing services to. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, like I said, they're one of the best online lenders out there, in my opinion. The starting rate is a 12% simple interest. Origination fees are typically 2 to 3%. The terms are typically in between 6 months and 36 months. And then they have weekly and monthly payback options. They do require annual revenues of $180,000. So that's $15,000 a month is what they require at the bare minimum. So again, I can't say enough good things uh, about Idea Financial from what I've experienced in the past. And uh, Obviously, this is great news for them that they get a huge credit facility and now they can offer more capital in terms of a line of credit or a term loan for their borrowers. And if you're not sure if you want a, a line of credit or a term loan from, say, a Idea Financial, well, maybe you could check into Lydia is a what I would call a super broker or a super processor. They have relationships with anywhere from 50 to 75 different lenders and banks that offer different financial products for small business owners. They just now announced a partnership with Bankwell Financial Group out of Connecticut, where they're going to be able to offer SBA 7A loans now from the Lindio platform. So when you're filling out your information with Lindio, there's a few other super processors, super brokers out there, but I would say Lindio is top three out there for small business owners. Uh, you just fill out your information. And then if you pre-qualify for an SBA loan, it's going to match you with either a Bankwell Financial, I don't think they have any other SBA lenders on there yet. This could be the first one off to double check that, but obviously great news for Lindio, great news for Bankwell Financial. A lot of banks now are using these uh, FinTech companies like Lindio to do the processing and underwriting. So for your small business owners, it's making your lives easier. You're not having to spend as much time applying. You're using one platform and then they're pointing you in the direction saying, hey, you know, you would qualify for this or this makes sense for your needs that you have let us know through the application process. So we're going to point you in this direction of the SBA loan and we have partnered with this bank or line of credit makes the most sense. So we're going to send you to say Idea Financial or on deck or, or whoever it may be. So anyway, big news coming from from Lindio and this uh, Bankwell Financial Group out of Connecticut. I think this is going to keep happening over and over again. I know SmartBiz does this as well. They partner with banks across the country to provide SBA loans and lines of credit. And we're just going to keep seeing these larger banks, I wouldn't say infiltrate, but partner up with, with these fintech processors because the fintechs have clearly figured it out as far as processing and underwriting. And uh, it fills the need for the big banks and also fills the need of the small business owner as far as time. Because time is your all's number one most important asset. And if you can use one platform and fill out your information one time and find different options that make sense for your business, then it's a win-win for everybody. All right, moving on to the 2024 Small Business Lending Survey Reports, where it was a survey done of U.S. banks for their insight into their small business lending practices. They asked for 2,000 banks to respond. 1,300 of uh, U.S. banks did respond. It was about a quarter of the banks that are represented throughout the U.S. So pretty solid as far as a good representation of U.S. banks that responded here in this survey. And then I'm just going to read off some of the insights that I found looking through this survey report. But they did say that most banks still require face-to-face -face meetings when it comes to small business lending. Whereas if you're dealing with online lenders, you just submit your information and you get on a phone call. A lot of times you don't even have to get on a Zoom call. 
most banks still do it the old school way and they want a face-to-face -face meeting before they come with a credit decision. Most banks offer up to a million dollar loan for small businesses and have offer up to $3 million. doesn't matter if it's SBA loan, line credit, term loan. Obviously, they have different financial product offerings for small businesses, but I thought that was interesting. Smaller banks use difficult to quantify underwriting practices for small business loans, whereas large banks are, are heavy on the quantifying data to make a decision. More than half of the large banks can approve small business loans in a day, whereas the, the smaller the bank, typically the longer the approval time. So those two points go hand to hand, I believe. When you're a smaller bank, you're using more of a, let's say like you're, you're just getting a feel for this small business owner and their character, what type of industry they're in. You're just kind of making more of a gut decision. Whereas these larger banks are looking into the data. So most banks offer up to a million dollars for small businesses and half offer up to $3 million. Uh, smaller banks use difficult to quantify underwriting practices for small business loans, whereas large banks are really digging into the numbers. They're heavy on the quantifying data to make a decision. So those two points go hand in hand. Smaller banks have less resources, less of a workforce. They're making more gut decisions, whereas large banks are really diving into the numbers to come up with their underwriting practices to come up with a credit decision. Fintech and credit unions continue to grow as steady competition versus banks. Fintechs like Lindio that I mentioned earlier and other loan marketplaces like LendingTree, it's easier to get a small business loan done through a online bank, but the interest rates are higher. So people still go to small banks or large banks. It's just going to take a lot longer for them to borrow money versus going to one of these online lenders and getting a loan done in 24 hours. Small banks are more likely to compete with credit unions, whereas large banks compete mostly with fintech lenders and credit card issuers. No surprise there. When lending to startups, large banks rely on government guarantees, typically done through the SBA programs, whereas small banks, again, use the difficult to quantify data practices, aka making more of a gut decision. Last thing I want to go over is uh, the damage done by Hurricane Helene and the small business owners throughout the eastern half of the U.S. and in the Appalachian regions and the coastline towns that were affected by the, the floods and the storms and the wind damage done from the hurricane. Again, thoughts and prayers going out to anybody that's been affected. I hope you all didn't experience too much pain and, or loss throughout this, but uh, it's been, it has been eye-opening, you know, the damage that has been done. So very sorry for those that have been affected. But uh, if you are on the road to recovery, if you're ready to start that process as a small business owner, I wanted to just share with you all a couple of different programs that you can apply for through the SBA to start that relief process as far as either a loan or grant assistance from the SBA. FEMA is doing it as well, but I'm just going to go over these SBA programs and switch over to my screen here in a second. All right, you can find this website if you just type in Hurricane Helene SBA Relief. And you'll find that there's a couple of different options that you can look into here. They have a business physical disaster loan, the EIDL. It's not the COVID EIDL. And then there's the COVID personal property loan. So let's look at the business physical disaster loan first. Here are the eligibility and use of proceeds and terms that I'm going to go over real quick. Anything up to $2 million to qualified businesses or most private nonprofit organizations to cover disaster losses not fully covered by insurance. So... Whatever is not covered by insurance, you can su supplement this with, through the SBA business physical disaster property loan. Uh, covers disaster loans not fully covered by insurance or other sources. If required to apply insurance proceeds to an outstanding mortgage on a damaged property, there, that amount can be included in your disaster loan application. Proceeds from insurance coverage on business property may be deducted from the eligible loan amount. And then use of proceeds to use on property, machinery, equipment, fixtures, inventory, leasehold improvements. Terms, first payment is deferred for 12 months. So whatever the loan is uh, given, once you receive the loan funds, you don't have to pay for the first 12 months. No interest accrual in the first 12 months. Interest rate will not exceed 4%. And then uh, let's see, it goes out 30 years. Collateral requirements is required to the extent possible for physical damage loans over $50,000. And then real estate is the preferred collateral for the loans of 200000 or less will not require the owner of the business to use their primary residence as collateral. So anything 200000 or less, you don't have to put your personal property up as collateral. 
if it's determined that the owner has other assets of equal quality and of a value equal to greater than the loan amount. Okay. And how to apply, you just click here and then you select the location, select your state, then your county, and then you can continue on. And then we're going to go back. We'll go to the EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Again, this is not for COVID. Okay. Small businesses, small agricultural cooperatives, and most private nonprofit organizations located in a declared disaster area and have suffered substantial economic injury may be eligible for an SBA EIDL. So let's do eligibility. So substantial economic injury means the business is unable to meet its financial obligations and pay its regular necessary operating expenses. Even if your business wasn't physically damaged, you can still apply for the EIDL. So loss of expected profits. If you need working capital to help small businesses uh, impacted by the weather, EIDL assistance is available only to small businesses when SBA determines they are unable to obtain credit elsewhere. Businesses must meet the following criteria to qualify for economic injury. The business was directly impacted by the disaster. I'm parakeetly here. The business cannot cover expenses due to the disaster and or debt payments. So if you're already paying on loans, you can't make those payments because your business isn't operating at a hundred percent or it's not operating at all. You can use the IDL here. The business was physically located in the declared disaster area. Use of proceeds. It's for working capital and normal expenses, rate utilities, fixed debt payments. Yeah, IDL funds cannot be used for expanding facilities, buying fixed assets, repairing physical damages. Again, that's the loan that we just talked about. Refinancing debt, paying out dividends or bonuses or paying back loans to stockholders or principals. Terms, it's the same. First, first payment deferred for 12 months. Interest rate not exceeding 4% and the um, loan term is 30 years. Collateral requirements. Required for loans over 50 grand. Real estate is the preferred collateral. Loans of 200,000 or less will not require the owner of the business to use their primary residence as collateral. If it is determined the owner has other assets of equal quality and a value equal to or greater than the amount of the loan. Okay. How to apply. Click on this link here. And then it's the same as before. Just click your state, click your county, and then go on and fill out the information. Okay. So I just want to share that information with you all. You know, hopefully this helps whenever you're ready to start applying for this. If you need it and you're affected by Hurricane Helene. That's it for the show today. Thank you for so much for tuning in. We, we appreciate your all's time. We went over a lot of good stuff today. The Fed dropping the interest rates, <clears throat> the SBA 504 uh, refinancing streamlined guidelines, idea of financially getting a credit facility of 50 million, the partnership between Bankwell Financial and uh, Lindio for expedited SBA 7A loan processes, the 2024 business lending. That's it for the show today. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you're all's time, we went over a lot of good stuff. The Fed dropping the interest rates, the SBA 504 streamlining its debt refinancing. Uh, let's see what else we did. The IDF Financial receiving a $50 million credit facility for their line of credit program. Bakewell Financial Group partnering with Lindio for uh, expediting SBA 7A loan processing and applications, the 2024 Small Business Lender Survey Report from banks all across the U.S. on insights into their lending practices for small businesses. And lastly, how to apply for and receive aid for the damages done by Hurricane Helene. If you liked the video today, please like and subscribe and we'll catch you at the next one.